kind of phenomenal with her. Well, one of the things I was, I was commenting uh, about the Nobel Week is that one of the first days we go to the Nobel Museum, and, uh, and those of us, um, we, you know, about the, all the teams came, uh, all the team members came to the, to, the, to the events, and one of the things that we saw at the Nobel Museum, uh, they, they were telling us they had just taken down the exhibit of Berkeley, in, in the, in the Nobel Prize is from Berkeley. And, you know, and why Berkeley? I mean, the, you, know, you have a whole exhibit about Berkeley at the Nobel Museum, and I think it's not a coincidence um, that so many Nobel Prizes come from Berkeley. There's, there's, some, there's a couple of features, at least my impression is, a couple of features that I think make Berkeley unique and, and really help foster this kind of creativity and, the, and these kinds of, uh, you know, sort of you know, uh, break, breaking news events. Um, first is the fact that is, I think there's a real easygoing um, lack of hierarchy at Berkeley that, that really encourages young people to be leaders in, in these projects. That very early on, I was you know asked to take on uh, being the leader of a group when I was you know I was just uh, just a few years out of my out of grad school, um, and I think that that style is, is actually very much fits this this uh, way in which you know everybody talks to everybody as equals. We don't we don't stand on ceremony too much. Uh, we rarely put on the you know the jackets and, jackets and ties, um, and uh, and I think that really helps. I think it really makes for this this, this very uh, relaxed. Um, encouraging environment for, for the young people to, to take leadership roles and to be working together in groups um, where everybody is part of the story, whether they're the most senior professor um, to the, the youngest undergraduate in the group, any of them will be listened to at, at the table in, the, in this way, that, and I think that makes a big difference. That's one thing. Um, another is, is the fact that Berkeley has, is, has just the right scale of activities that there's, you find that in almost any area that you, that you need for your project, there's somebody around who's an expert, one of the top people in the field, um, near you, and you can go and just walk over and talk to them. Now, you know, it's not crucial in principle. You could email somebody across the country, you could call them on the phone, but there's just something very human about doing science that means that you're much more likely um, to get the information if you can just walk across you know, uh, the next building and, and talk to somebody. And then finally, um, that's exaggerated by, or that's heightened by the fact that we're, I think, the only university I know of that has this kind of multidisciplinary national laboratory just contiguous. You know, we just walk five minutes up the hill and we're in, in our national laboratory, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, and a huge fraction of the faculty here on campus do research up on the hill. Um, and so that means that you have all these resources at this extra level of, of, uh, of capability um, that you wouldn't find you know, most, most universities. So I think all these things coming together have, have made Berkeley just a, a wonderful place um, to, to do research. And, you know, and I, so anybody who's still trying to decide where they're going um, for, you know, for their uh, school, I should say, you know, come here, be an, under, be, be an undergraduate um, who then solves the problem that makes the next Nobel Prize you know, happen. <laughs> As Chester, I can confirm there's no hierarchy whatsoever at Berkeley. <laughs> Sure, uh, we have a little time left that I'm sure people here have uh, uh, questions. 